Wix Studio, one end-to-end -end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. The number one long-form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real-time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with contentatscale.ai. Hello, one, two, three. So I'm a developer, right? You're an SEO, and we are quite from different worlds, right? But we have at least one thing in common. Do you know what? We hate JavaScript. <laughs> you and I, we hate it, and even I. Why do we, okay, why do we not like JavaScript at all? So let's go a bit of history. What behind modern JavaScript websites and old school, old good school websites. When we are talking about modern JavaScript websites, first of all, like when we heard like words, React, Angular, Amber.js, whatever, so like on framework. Old school websites are HTML documents. So a server return a piece of HTML code, browser it parse, Googlebot parse uh, the document, and we are good. We already have a content, everything inside. With application, with JavaScript application, it's completely different way how a browser, how Googlebot perceives your page. Applications are executed. So the same as you open application on your laptop, on your iPhone, they are executed, they are not parsed as HTML documents. And what we know, at least for last 50 years, I believe, JavaScript have bugs. They had bugs, they have bugs, they will have bugs. And it will be like for always, I say. And what does it mean bugs for us? You know, like for SEOs, bugs means so mostly in most cases, Google can't render your page properly. So in old school way, you already have a, have a page, but now it should be rendered. And JavaScript bugs can make things, you know, a lot of like harder for that. So in general, if we, when we are talking about JavaScript SEO, it's um, not so like SEO. It's, we are always talking about the page. A page should have a content, right? So content, what we expect, what we need, and what we want it to be on a page. So I made this conclusion, you know, we are not actually doing SEO here. We are doing QA, right? So to have everything. And let's look on our job as QA specialist. Now we became not... Uh, SEO specialist would be KQA manager, right? We re, in Jetoctopus, we released uh, JavaScript Pro exactly three years ago, in 2020, right? And uh, first months, we had some issues, you know, a client came to us and said, you can't crawl my, uh, my website properly, and we had it a few months. Now, clients came to us and, came, and like, told us, you uh, crawl website wrong, it's not correct, and okay, Let's, let's take it easy, take a look, and in the end, it's like bugs on a website. And that's why we can't find more pages, or we can find an unneeded pages, etc. And our first test case, and I expect you will download the presentation later, and you like, you know, we open first test case. What we are doing, we open a page, and it started to load like quite a long time. I mean, you see page, but still spinner in the browser rolling out, yeah? We wait, 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 and uh, at this moment, you can close my presentation and go directly to developers, like, and asking them, guys, something going wrong. You don't have to go further. It's enough already to make, like, to fix your page, to be loaded, like, not waiting, waiting 30 seconds, as we had such cases. After, okay, your page loaded within uh, some normal amount of time, but you don't see full content, you don't see your footer. Like, is it correct? No, you stop in your job and like go and talk to developers. And what we saw in Daniel presentation, no clicks for content. Content should be present already on a page, okay? So without any interaction, scrolls, etc. 
we go into a second step when we are talking about incomplete content. So your page loaded very fast, everything fine, you see footer, you see menu, but you realize it, internal linking block miss it on your product pages. Right? It's critical here. Other type of things, you realize you have your, this internal link block on your page. For example, you crawl your website by some crawler, screaming frog, let's say, but in reality, it doesn't present on a page because JavaScript remove it. And I'm not, I'm really, I'm not joking, I saw this situation. Simply after executing JavaScript, your internal link is missing. For what? A very dangerous case here about JavaScript redirects. So we know redirects 301, 302, etc. But JavaScript as well can do redirects. And it's very, very, you know, like bad situation here. So how will you know about that? Your page started going out of index for no reason. You have a content, you have internal linking, you, you see your log files analysis, 200 status code, everything fine, but pages disappeared in index. And after you will realize some developers implement some language navigation, etc., using JavaScript redirects. It's one of the worst things and very hard to find it. In Screaming Frog, you can configure JavaScript redirection. In uh, Jet Octopus, we have special tricky status code 399 for that. And like tell your developers 100 times, window location ref never ever for bots, etc. Like only after some user interactions. Okay. Different content for different user agents. So you open your browser, it's fine. You started looking in Google and you realize it not the same content as you see. And again, a case, you know, for user for Google bot. Do you see how differs content here? Like for user, JavaScript adds 500 internal links, for Googlebot just one. And it's like e-commerce website with products. So test your, like check your pages with development uh, dev tools in Google Chrome with different user agent. Crawl your website with different user agent and compare them. Okay. SSR is broken. So SSR is very fine, but it doesn't mean uh, it works all time. So how can you understand that? You simply click view code in Google Chrome and it should be like very, very less amount of lines here, like here, you know, 22 lines for the whole website. Or you can check your text HTML ratio in crawler, so it will be almost zero. It's very crucial here. Even when your SSR fine yet, and it works yet, so SSR may miss some content blocks. So again, internal linking. We had a case with a client when the SSR doesn't, has, doesn't have product listing. So you have category pages, and in SSR version, simply no products. Why? Because it was so resourceful for developers, and they decided to not put it in server-side rendering. And for Google perspective, like you have income missed content there, and it's again very bad. And how to test it? Make custom extraction in any crawler you use, like for you expecting. You have your products, your blocks, your internal linking blocks, your, your like product descriptions, etc. And change it, titles, indexation. So when you have an initial HTML, MetaRobots index, or you don't have MetaRobots, for example, and JavaScript adds MetaRobots no index, what will be? Like one page will be an in index, some not. Like you send in mixed signals to Googlebot, and it's not a correct way at, at least at all. So if we go to Google guidelines, they said 100 times, so you should have your meta tags in initial HTML code. They should not be added uh, on client side rendering. Again, title change it, meta description change it. Is it a good way? Of course, no. So as Easy said, why like keep things simple? So even when developers wanted to do that, tell them 101 times, so make things simple in initial HTML. And cherry on a cake, robots.txt. We had a client who like complained, so you just find on a website like 100K pages, we should have like millions of pages. 
Okay, I started digging it. And uh, I realized it, so we not crawl pagination. Pagination is open for indexation. Pagination is on a website, uh, so you see it clearly. But we not follow it. Like, why? So after like, digging it, I realized that a JavaScript code, what renders a pagination, was blocked in robots.txt. So you open a website in a browser, and you see pagination. Everything works fine, right? But Googlebot doesn't see. And it's, again, very hard to find it. And Googlebot use robots.txt rules for JavaScript files as well, for CSS files as well, for images as well. And to have like proper, pro properly rendered page on a, like inside Google, you should not block them at all, like in, depending on a website. So, and very often, developers put JavaScript, CSS images on CDNs, even like own CDNs. It may be some subdomain, for example, like cdn.yourwebsite.com, for example. And it as well can be blocked because like system administrators, administrations and developers, they live in completely different realities. They even don't think about your Google bot, about some render. I, and I tell they don't know even what means rendering issues for Google bot. They put robots no index, no, like disallow slash, and that's it. And never, never, ever robots TXT with eyes, only with tools, and I tell you why. In Twitter, we had a pool, like, I don't remember, like from um, Linker search tool, and he asked like a quiz, you know, with robots TXT rules. Many, many people perceive them wrong. Robots TXT rules not merging, so use tools better. Let's take an example. So you put to your robots.txt, like disallow, question mark, because you have some pages with UTM source and you don't want to have them like crawled by Googlebot, right? Like very common thing, I believe, like 30% should have this in robots.txt. And your JavaScript with question mark, because developers implement some plugin, it's from WordPress website, some plugin with optimize JavaScript and adds versions with question mark. And in the result, this JavaScript uh, files will be not executed. And okay, in case of simple WordPress website, it's not so huge uh, problems, let's say. But when we are talking again about like React website, like fully client-side rendering, etc., it can be disaster easily. Okay, and here's an example from real life CDN, like good times. So how do we work with JavaScript issues? We have product page, we have category page, index page, and maybe some card. We check them manually, works fine. We see our footer, header, menu, fine. But believe me or not, but please believe me. So we saw so many cases, you know, when our clients came, we have pretty simple website. But developers are very talented people, and they can make you bugs very, very deep on your website, on your some product, deep product pages, categories. And it's all surprises for you, you know, like they want to make your, your life happy. And check more means only one, crawl more. Crawl as many as you can, wherever tool you use. Just do not stop it on 100 page, do not stop it on 1,000 page. Like crawl more as many as you can. It's, no other way, believe me, like just check, check 100 times, no silver bullet here. Okay, JavaScript error setup in Screaming Frog, so in uh, Google Developer Tools we have like JavaScript errors, I believe you saw them, so Screaming Frog also can gather those errors and it's very like helpful after you crawled as many as you can. Okay, in Jetoctopus we as well it enable it by, defo by default and you can always get back to them and analyze it. And we have bonus part here because when I'm talking about like any topic, I will always talk about like a few words about log files analysis and crawl budget. And you may ask me, where is crawl budget, where is JavaScript here? Like, what are you talking about? And let's see an example. We have a pretty nice website, huge crawl budget, yeah? Six million of visits monthly, like on almost 2K, 200K pages. And you analyze some spikes, you see like what's going on here, like Googlebot crawls, like you make some conclusions, right? And after you go a little bit deeper, and what is 
what is those URLs? Hmm? Are, you, are you normal pages or those pages are simply JavaScript requests, what Googlebot made during page rendering. So you analyze your crawl budget, some amount, make assumption, but in reality, your crawl budget is another amount of pages, not this one. You should exclude those pages from uh, log files analysis. Keep it in mind, because every page can, like, as I remember, uh, can make about 30 to 50 JavaScript requests. So instead of one visit in log file, you will have 51 visits, you know, in log file, in your log file. So you can analyze completely wrong number. So always keep in mind, and there are no, you know, I can tell you like this URLs from JavaScript, this not. It's only about your website, you know, it's better. So if it looks something strange for you, go to developers and ask them what's, what's going on here. So make sure you include, not about, uh, not from log files. It, can, it may help you after, like, when you make extended log files analysis. But, I mean, exclude your JavaScript requests from your analysis. So do not calculate them. Have them in logs, but do not calculate them in your log files analysis. Because crawl budget is amount of requests to pages, not uh, for GS requests here. Keep in mind. And, Ella, some conclusion here. <laughs> Opa. Oh, I missed one slide. So I made, I, I made a change to presentation. So here's a slide of, you know, of our conclusions and takeaway. So JavaScript will not go, unfortunately. So do you want it or you don't want? It's better to start learning JavaScript even, you know, in basic way, like to understand what means some words, what you see on your GS files, etc. So it will help to talk, it will help a lot you to talk with developers. The biggest problem in JavaScript SEO, let's say, you almost can do nothing. You, what you should do, you should do, go to developers and talk with them and to convince them, you know, like, it's a huge problem for us, like, do it, do it, do it. Because developers live in a completely different world with completely different, you know, picture in mind. And only communication, I don't know, get married with some of them, maybe it will help you. <laughs> JavaScript will create families, so... <laughs> Even that. And, uh, like, analyze it. Like, it's just hands wo work with your hands and no way, like, I'm a developer, no AI, no, nothing will help you here. Just pure work, boring work, unfortunately, with JavaScript. And, like, thank you very much. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools.